Welcome to the latest episode of the John Eads Podcast, where I share ideas and best practices to help you on your leadership journey. My name is John Eads. Here we go. Welcome back. Another week to learn and grow and develop and get better. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing this week, covering the 10 proven, reliable leadership lessons learned last year to help you lead more effectively this year. Uh, it is, they're simple, but just because they're simple doesn't mean they're easy. Uh, before we get there, just a quick announcement. The Catalyst for Growth Summit is on January 4th. Seats are filling up fast. Nine world-class inspirational speakers are going to breathe life into you and help make 2023 your best and most impactful year ever. Go to CatalystForGrowthSummit.com. Sign up today. It is free. There's also a VIP ticket if you want to watch it on replay. Do not wait. Go to CatalystForGrowthSummit.com and sign up today. I cannot wait to see you there. Now, this week's show is all about these reliable leadership lessons learned last year to help you lead more effectively this year. And Just because they might be simple doesn't mean they're easy. And this is all about how do you take these lessons and apply them into your walk? How do you apply them in the way that you lead? How do I ensure that I'm living these out on a daily basis, not only for myself and the performance of what I'm responsible for in my team, but also for those individuals that you get the opportunity to lead? Yes, opportunity, I said it, not have to get to. So number one lesson from last year to help you lead more effectively this year is to reject the fire station mentality. Waiting for something to happen isn't how to lead. Instead, we must be proactive and create opportunities to elevate others. I was driving down this uh, long road just before the New Year's and it just hit me like a brick wall as I passed this ga- this fire station that these men and women that go to work every day are waiting for a call to come in. They're waiting for an emergency, for somebody to need them and they jump into action. If you lead like this, you miss the point of leadership. It's being proactive, it's looking, it's seeking, it's getting out there and finding ways to elevate others, not waiting for people to knock on your door or to send you an email. There's actually almost nothing worse that a leader can do than to say to me, well, I have an open door policy. Well, guess how many people are going to go knock on your open door policy? Not many. They don't want to admit that they need help or that they're wrong or they they don't know what they're doing. They might do it occasionally, but it's not going to be often. It's going to require you to reject this fire station mentality and to get out there and lead. Be proactive in your leadership approach. Number two, learn to serve. Only servants can succeed in leadership because for selfish people, it's hell on them. See, serving others is a skill that you can develop. It doesn't matter. We wake up thinking about number one. I get that. We all do. It's our human nature. But leadership is not about you. It is about others, which is going to require you to serve even when you don't feel like it. Serving them about doing what's in their best interest, even when it's not easy. And a great example of this is uh, having a difficult conversation with someone. If you're thinking about you, you probably won't have that difficult conversation with someone because it's not easy. It's uncomfortable. You don't want to hurt their feelings potentially. But if you're serving them and you want what's in their best interest, it requires the difficult conversation. It requires you to have courage to say, hey, I've noticed some things, both good and bad, and I want to talk to you about it. 
Do you have some time right now? Don't wait right now. So number two is to learn to serve. Because remember, only servants can succeed in leadership. For selfish people, it's hell on them. Number three, stop being someone you aren't. People know when you're trying to be someone or something that you aren't. It's time to embrace who you are and what you're working to become. This is about authenticity. This is about being real, not uh, fake it until you make it. I would prefer a young leader to go to their team and say, hey, I am working really hard. I am so excited about this opportunity. However, there are some things I am working to learn and I'm going to learn them fast and I'm going to need your help. Boy, that's a much better approach than to act like you know everything when they know that you don't. Stop being someone you aren't. Be authentic. Show up as yourself. Be vulnerable. Be truthful. And be helpful to those around you. Don't don't try to be someone that you're not capable of being because eventually they're going to figure it out. Number four. And the most important lesson we will cover today, leadership is temporary. Your impact is lasting. It is time this year to stop reducing your life and your career to just about how much money you can make. It's time to raise it to the level of impact you can have. Just think about that. I don't know how long you're going to be in your role or how many, how many moments you're going to have with the people around you that you get the opportunity to lead them. But I do know that they will remember the impact that you have on them and the lessons that you teach them. Any parent, any parent knows how impactful and lasting a memory can be, something that you did or didn't do. People can carry it for decades They'll mimic and change their behavior based on that one moment of impact. But you might not be in their life and you won't be in their life forever. Your leadership is temporary, but your impact is lasting, which means we must be extremely thoughtful about the example that we are setting and the leadership that we are providing. Because everybody can be a teacher, good and or bad. And I want you to be the good kind of teacher. Leadership is temporary. Impact is lasting. Number five, assumptions in communication set us up for suffering. If there's one thing I've learned more than anything this year, in the absence of clear communication, team members will fill the gaps with assumptions and their own incorrect stories. If there's, if, I need to work on my communication. I need to work on my communication. I get it. But when there's a lack of communication, we will fill that gap, that air, that uncertainty with some assumption about what is happening or what you think. And it's often wrong. Stop assuming your people know. They set team members and relationships up for suffering. Have the conversation. Don't don't let them assume anything. Be really clear about what it is and what you need and what they need to do. Or else everyone is going to suffer. Anyone who has been married for some time knows what I'm talking about. Our brains are wired to just fill that space with our own incorrect stories. No more assumptions, more clarity this year. Number six, no team or organization is great without its people. In today's world where we're so quick to cut people or so quick to assume that we can uh, outsource this or outsource that. And that is fine. There are going to be things with technology that allows organizations and teams to outsource certain roles or jobs. I am not against that. But no team or organization is great without its people. A team by definition is a group of people working to achieve a common goal. 
We need humans. We need people. We need relationships. And team members must be known, valued, and liked. And they have to know that the work they are doing matters to a meaningful cause. No one wants to just show up for no reason. No one wants to show up just to show up or to just collect the paycheck. That's not what this is about. People need to feel known and valued and liked. Remember, it is the people that matter. It is the people that will come to your funeral. It is the people that will celebrate with you at your Christmas party. It is not a robot. It is not an algorithm. It is human beings. No team or organization is great without its people. What a key reminder and a key lesson. Number seven, one person can completely change the energy on a team or in a room. One person. We've all been in the room. We've all felt somebody come in and all of a sudden it is a completely different environment. Good and or bad. I, I, I think the two stories, the first one is we're, we're working with an executive leadership team and uh, the CEO came in late and we had this incredible energy and optimism and teamwork. And it was like the moment that this CEO walked in the room, everything changed. People stopped talking. People stopped communicating. They deferred to everything that he said or didn't say. It was it, in a moment it changed. Or how about Deion Sanders, the, the, the college football coach that's now at Colorado? I can almost assure you, the moment Deion Sanders got off that plane in Boulder, Colorado, the energy changed. How many, uh, how many media was when he got off the plane? What kind of people showed up at his conference? The, the kind of talent he's recruiting, the kind of... Um, thoughts that the players had. It was all because one inner, one person completely changed the energy on a team or in the room. And it's your job and it's my job to find a way to enhance the energy, not to reduce it, to build others up, not tear them down. Because the energy that you bring is a choice, much like your attitude. What kind of energy are you going to bring this year? Positive or negative, you get to choose. Number eight, and, and it's one of my all-time favorites because it's a proven, tested uh, lesson that, that I wish I would have known this from the very first time I led a team, and that is to connect before you correct. Connect before you correct. Because when team members know that you care, the better they will respond to coaching and feedback. Team members have to know that you care. And if you jump right into discipline, if you jump right into telling people the rules and they don't know that you care, that you're not a human, that they matter, there is a good chance they are going to reject that correction and move a different direction. Your job is to connect before you correct. And if you want to lead, that means you know that leadership is about relationship. And I've got to be in really good relationship with the people that I'm leading. And that will ultimately allow me to challenge them, to push them, to go a little bit further, to get more out of them. It's really hard to do that if I'm not in relationship and I'm not connected with you. Number nine. A compelling vision provides hope. Napoleon said, a leader's job is to define reality and to deliver hope. And one of the very best ways to do that is to have a vision for something better than what exists today. People need hope. They need something to believe in. And a leader can do an amazing job. I mean, a fantastic job in providing a vision of a brighter future than exists today. I mean, we all want that, whether we say we do or not. Have a vision for something better than what exists today. And the problem with vision is that your eyes are the enemy of it. It's only going to show you what you can see. 
But that's not what a great leadership vision is. A great leadership vision is something that doesn't exist, that you can't see, but you have the ability to see something that does not yet exist and then communicate that vision. Oh, what a powerful lesson. Even a frontline manager, even a, 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 a mother or father or a husband or a wife have a vision that provides hope, something better than what exists today. I mean, that we need it. We require it as humans. And lastly... Number 10, no team can overcome toxic team members. I don't care how good of a performer somebody is. Toxic people crush a team or an organization. And the only answer for toxic team members is to remove them from your culture. You, you will beat your head into the wall trying to change them. They will, they will reduce the energy and suck the life right out of your team. They'll make it all about themselves and it will, it will just demoralize your team and the culture and your organization. Stop it. I don't care how good of a performer they are. Let them go perform somewhere else and ruin somebody else's culture. They might work for a little bit and, and that's fine. Make a, make a Sunday attempt, but toxic team members cannot be overcome. That can be the leader. That can be a team member. It, no one is immune. No team can overcome toxic team members. So whew, just a recap. Number one, reject the fire station mentality. Number two, learn to serve Number three, stop being someone that you aren't. Number four, leadership is temporary. Impact is lasting. Number five, assumptions and communication set us up for suffering. Number six, no team or organization is great without its people. Number seven, one person can completely change the energy on a team or in a room. Number eight, connect before you correct. Number nine, a compelling vision provides hope. And number 10, no team can overcome toxic team members. Now, my challenge to you today is to not solve all 10 or remember every single one each day. What I'm asking you to do is one small step, one simple step. Pick the one that is going to make the biggest impact on you and your team and implement it. If it's a toxic team member, make the decision to move on. If it's I, my team doesn't have hope, what's a compelling vision for my team this year? What is something we can't even dream of achieving, but if we did, it would make an enormous difference. If you're struggling with team members and, and no one's responding, it, it's more likely that you need to build a better relationship with them, not the other way around. Look, I don't know which of the 10 is most important to you, but I know that if you just pick one and you take proactive, actionable steps around it, it will get better. It's my hope that these reliable lessons learned this year will help you be a more effective leader this year. Until next time, be a great leader at work and at home.